Yeah, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our 10th online Rex program. Um, we're catching up to the number of ones that we've done live, which I think is about 15 or 16, so um, which were 10 day affairs. So uh, these have all been, uh, well, two were 10 weeks, and then about seven were, or eight were 13 weeks, and as a um, I think this is our third of our um, of our um, fourteen week ones. No, I don't think that all adds up to ten. But anyway, somewhere in between there. Thank you for joining us. Um, we have quite a few people who are joining us for the first time. So um, welcome to you, and thanks for becoming uh, Regrarians members. Um, we look forward to. Uh, not only spending the next 14 weeks, although it'll be longer than 14 weeks because we've got our uh, break over Christmas and the new year, but um, the, the the rest of the period as well, because um, as you will know, this is a, a year long membership, but um, once you've finished paying and we've got a few people who've done that today, um, you go over to becoming an alumni. So um, you retain access to the Regrarians workplace, uh, for the lifetime of it, and um, and you can watch uh, and participate in any recs going forward. Um, we encourage you to do that. Um, if you want us to uh, be involved as planners, well, then you have to keep paying. But uh, otherwise, once you do your twelve months, you can um, you can just stay with us, and uh, which is great. We really enjoy um, that and. A lot of people who do uh, also start to help uh, a lot of other people who are just on their first or second recs, which is awesome. Um, it's one of the reasons why we, A, really like the uh, longitudinal part of our program, um, which goes with a subscription style of payment. Um, but B, um, that enables us to as we always wanted to, and as we do in the field, when we're doing in field courses, is have that a highly participatory learning environment. I'll be your primary teacher, but um, as we'll discuss, there's a there's a bunch of other folks um, who are part of the Regrarians uh, alumni community who have much more expertise on a whole range of topics than than I do. Um, uh, I'll just uh, act as a role of trainer facilitator as much as anything else. And sometimes that those roles very much become big F facilitator and small T trainer. Um, and that's been one of the greatest things that we've enjoyed developing over the last few years. So let's um, get on with it. Um, I'm just going to press play on this. Sometimes that, oh, yeah, that works today. Um, and just a little bit about ourselves. Um, we're from uh, what has always been and always will be uh, Jar Jar Wurrung country in the southeast of uh, this continent of Australia. And um, uh, people have been here for a very long time, um, perhaps over 50 or 60,000 years. Um, a very diverse region. Um, about, uh, if we look at the Jar Jar Wurrung um, nation, um, it extends uh, from the, the Great Divide, as so many Indigenous peoples around the world. Um, it's actually watersheds and uh, catchment areas which define the boundaries. Uh, that's something that carries, that will carry through as a theme. Uh, through our work, particularly as we study key line geography in this uh, training. Um, and the Jar Jar Wurrung uh, nation um, starts right at the top of the Great Divide, which is that red line that you can see there, and then extends right out onto the Riverine Plain. Um, uh, out of, and uh, my family have been here in various parts of this uh, part of the world um, since the 1850s. So about as long as you can be for uh, Europeans. It's a very diverse region in terms, as I mentioned, um, it has quite high rainfall areas up on the divide, which sort of go up to around about um, a thousand millimeters or 40 inches of rainfall. 
uh, right down into the bottom stretches on the Riverine Plain where we're getting down to closer to 350 uh, millimetres or about 15, 14, 15 inches of rainfall. A lot of different crops grown here um, and so on. And the geology is quite diverse, um, which is reflected in the um, types of soils that are here and, and the types of production. So quite cool temperate areas up in the top parts of the range uh, and then, you know, quite uh, more semi-arid um, in the bottom part, which is over about 150, 200 kilometre um, stretch. So good foundation for someone like myself with what I do um, to um, be in a region like this, which has so great a diversity of both um, geologies um, and uh, and not big changes in climate, but a fairly decent climatic range. Uh, Regrarians, thanks to Danielle Nirenberg for this description. Um, well, we work with producers and farmers. Um, it's a you're a producer or farmer. It's an interesting set of terms um, to create profitable agricultural landscapes. Um, we are do it yourself. We have come around to that. Um, we've shifted our focus from being the kind of organisation um, that develops plans for people as a fee for service in that sort of classic consultancy role over to being much more of a facilitator. So that's why now well, over the over the last about seven years, um, we've shifted everything over to training you how to develop your farm plans as opposed to um, us doing them for you. We'll certainly help you um, because you all have different skills, but that's part of the participatory journey and one that we encourage you to participate in. Uh, what you'll get out of this is uh, whatever you put in will we'll be there and that will be demonstrated as you know, every question you ask uh, or, um, and every engagement you that you have with us will come back at you uh, and some. So please make use of that. Um, we've been very lucky in that we've um, worked over you know, every continent um, in well over 50 countries. We have, I think, 85 or 86 different countries who are members of the Regrarians Workplace. Um, but personally, I've been to well over 50 countries now. And um, yeah, it's almost not worth counting um, how many people we work with now or have worked with. What you'll see is that we host the workplace in a meta product. Meta used to be known as Facebook. Um, Facebook um, invited us in 2016 to, um, so we got this email one day saying, hey, uh, would you like to try this new platform that we developed? And it's a, a Facebook for companies. And so we had a look at it and went, oh yeah, this is amazing. Um, and uh, when we did our first Rex, and I don't know if anyone hears from that, but when we did our first Rex in online Rex in 2017, um, we sort of we were using Slack, uh, that platform, and it was pretty average, but it did the job as our sort of community hosting um, networking space. And about halfway through, we um, said to folks, hey, there's this new platform that we're going to shift over to in the next Rex. And within a week, everyone, um, bar, I think we had about 125 or so participants and about 122 of them just voluntarily migrated over to the workplace and we've been there ever since. So it wasn't ideal that we shifted in, um, in the middle of a course, but um, that's what we did. And well, the crowd spoke and so we've been there ever since. And it's um, been really uh, a massive moment for us um, as trainers and as managers of a network. I mean, we went from having a fairly significant uh, regenerative agriculture Facebook group for some time um, as a precursor to the really big one that's, on, um, that's there now. And... Um, it was a it was a moderation nightmare. Um, 
I can't recall of a post or a situation that we've had to moderate in the workplace and we've now got so close to 5,000 members. So, um, and uh, which is pretty amazing and a really high rate of, of activity, which is even more so. So we're very happy with the platform. Yes, it is a Facebook meta product and we get that and some people are resistant to using that, but um, yeah, it's, we've tried, we've looked at Mighty Networks, we've looked at, we've looked at Hivebright, we've looked at them all and um, um, well, people come and use our platform for a reason, um, as I'll discuss. The other part of this, which you, and I'll talk about the workplace in more detail in a moment, but um, the other part about the workplace, which we'd encourage you to do this, well, you know, I'll encourage you, but I, you know, many of you are going to have different relationships with, um, uh, with, um, sorry, I'm just looking at a note. Is it possible to see all the participants? I don't know about that. Uh, Mate, I'll um, have to see if I can manage that. Um, in any case, um, some of you are going to have different relationships with the way that you engage with um, these medias. I won't call the Regarians workplace a social media because I think it's a we look at it as a professional development trip platform. That's what you're engaged in here. You're paying us to deliver you uh, professional development. So this is the platform that it's hosted in. Certainly you can use it as part of your social engagement. I certainly do. I spend very, as soon as we developed this, we shifted pretty well all of our attention away from the, 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 the normal socials over to uh, just, just working in here. Um, and that's been a, quite a revelation for us personally um, and professionally. So if you wanna do that, um, then you've got the desktop versions of this um, application, but then you've also got uh, Android and I iOS apps for both the main workplace app and then the chat itself. So you can look at getting those. Um, other things that we do, um, well, we haven't been doing much of this lately, uh, is uh, filmmaking. Um, that's been a fairly big part of a lot of our time as an organization will be 30 years in March next year. Um, we started off in 90, March of 90, March the 6th, 1993. And part of that um, culminated in, at least in this project, in um, us having worked with uh, the Salatin family for well over a decade and us um, making uh, this film about their family and their operation. So you can have a look at that. It's uh, won many awards all over the world. Um, and I'm very, pr very proud of what we've achieved there. Um, more recently, since uh, the pandemic, um, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, unleashed upon us in March of, well, effectively in March of 2020 here in Australia, at least, um, that uh, we, all of our children um, who are 21, 23 and 30, um, they all lost their jobs and we um, lost our wings and we couldn't go overseas anymore. So we didn't know how long that was going to last. So an opportunity arose for us to do something that we've also wanted to do for a long time. And that was to open a, a restaurant which showcased um, the producers that we work with. Uh, part of my background is uh, working in hospitality before I um, left the farm, got into hospitality um, both front and back of house. And, um, and Lisa, my wife, was the same. Her first job leaving Bendigo was in hospo. So we've both worked in that, um, that field before we took on all of this. So it was something that we always wanted to do and that's where we are now. That's where I'm sitting here. Um, that's where I just went out and I'm very lucky I was able to use that nice Slayer espresso machine to make my double ristretto this morning. Mm. And it's damn good with Schultz Organic Milk, who we've been working with. I started working with the Schultz family in about 1989 when they supplied the organic green grocer that I managed way back when. So I've had a long engagement in this sort of <coughs> biological agriculture space um, from working in hosp hospitality to working in the retail sector um, and as a buyer 
and then um, shifting uh, gradually into farm planning um, with a focus um, on, uh, on organic and biological, ecological production systems. So it's really great to have this food outlet, which uh, allows us to express that in a different way and connect in a different way with, with consumers in particular, and, and farmers as well, and bring that together. Um, the Regarians Handbook is a massive project for us, uh, for me personally, um, the biggest project I've ever been involved with um, because it is so detailed. I'll touch on where we're up to with that in a moment um, or through today. And um, yeah, I'll leave it at that because um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. In terms of um, us, the main people that you'll work with at Regrarians will be Georgie and myself. Um, Georgie is a, a Bulgarian um, genius who currently lives in Finland with his partner in life, uh, Sari. Uh, they've just, they're just moving up to Lapland or getting closer to up that way. Um, because that's where Sari is from. Georgie loves the cold. So do I. Um, my family's originally from the northernmost tip of Ireland, uh, Inishon Peninsula, where the old Docrate clan still runs wild. And um, But we work really closely together. We've worked together for nearly a decade. Um, and um, yeah, we work, yeah, we're a great team. So um, I couldn't have a better partner in crime. So um, yeah, if you've got any questions at all throughout the program, um, George, it's good too because Georgie operates on the sort of opposite time of the clock. We've got about an over an hour on either side of our uh, our days where we overlap and catch up, but um, you can get serviced by um, both of us um, pretty well um, every day of the working week, um, 24, 24 five, we'll say. Um, We've got this huge network. I can't put everyone here. This is the photos of people who came, some of the people who did the um, the uh, Rex 10-day um, workshops with us in 2016. But we've got a huge number of people who um, are really, um, we're, who we're really grateful to because they continually uh, come up and answer questions. It's it's a really great forum from that perspective in terms of uh, the professional development um, outcomes because it's peer to peer, which we're really grateful for. Of course, there's other online groups that do that as well, um, which is awesome. Um, I suppose where we're our point of difference is that everyone who has who is a member here has been exposed to our platform. And it is our platform which is really central to the differentiation here. It frames the conversation, it categorizes the conversation. The other thing that we've got going on, which really we've stepped up since um, the, pan the COVID-19 pandemic um, is this collaboration with other partners. So a lot of people have over the, as the digital divide has started to be reduced, in rural areas of the world, um, it's opened up um, the possibility for a whole lot of companies who've been around or new companies to um, work directly with a, a number of people through in, in online frameworks. Um, all of these who are on the screen here have tried other frameworks such as Mighty Networks and Hivebright and so on. And um, anyway, they've all come to us voluntarily and said, um, hey, we'd like to, uh, started with three, the 3LM network um, in the UK um, in Ireland. Um, and uh, they came to us and said, hey, we'd love to shift from using Hivebright, which is what the Savory Institute uses, Savory Network uses, and have our courses all hosted on, on, uh, on the Regrarians workplace. So that was the first, and we've sort of kept keep expanding that so which is fantastic so that broadens out the community um so we become we've you know we've been consultants to consultants for a long time um and now we're being networks to net we're being a network to networks um which is a, so we've become a sort of a network host which just broadens out the community um and again you know because of the way that we've structured it and because of the way that uh um, let's just say the 
that we're a professional development space, um, that's really enabled us to um, get um, a um, well to have to have a really safe place to use that sort of frame um, that that requires no moderation. So the Regrarians platform itself, to hone in on that, is adapted from the Keyline Scale of Permanence, and uh, which was developed by the late great P.A. Yeomans, um, who developed the Keyline Plan from the 19, late 1940s to early 1950s here in Australia. Um, uh, the Keyline Plan, um, as the permaculture co-originator David Holmgren put it, was the world's first broad scale land integrated land planning framework. Um, there were very basic land planning frameworks, particularly out of um, in terms of agricultural land planning um, that came out of soil conservation, but not really integrated, I would say, um, dealt more with straight soil conservation concerns, but it wasn't really until Yeomans came along in the 1950s as someone who was from outside of agriculture, because he was a mining geologist and earth mover and developer, um, that, that we got this, um, this expansion and through this concept of the key line scale of permanence. So we took that uh, frame of the scale of permanence, which is um, well, the key line scale of, rel of the relative permanence of things agricultural for the planning, development and management of agricultural lands. And it's set out in this way. So climate, land shape, water supply, farm roads, trees, permanent buildings, subdivision, fences and soils. So when we look at that, um, we go back to my statement here was that, well, we looked at that as being a really solid frame and a lot of people have over time. But it wasn't it wasn't holistic um, because it didn't uh, consider um, things like um, humans. <laughs> um, it didn't uh, cons consider things like regulations, um, economy, um, uh, marketing, all of those sorts of things and energy generation and storage. So we took that framework um, and I would say adapted, adapted, not, but, well, yeah, adapted from it because the, the basis to it is sound, um, into, but we changed the, uh, the, uh, the names of the different layers and ch changed it from being factors to layers. Because as planners, um, well, as you will find when you are planning, um, a really, um, you, you will start to look at um, planning in the form of layers. Just as we did way back when we were using, and some of you will still use this, where you use an aerial photo and then you use tracing paper or, or clear plastic layers or over the top of your basic, uh, of your base of an aerial um, photograph um, or a satellite image. It's the same thing and that's why we call them layers. So they're layers of consideration, they're mapping layers, uh, they're layers of concern is the way we sort of frame it. So by this time, you've probably read all of these. Um, so we've changed a few of these. We've changed, I'd say, or expanded on Yeomans in terms of the scope of each one of these layers, which I'll touch on in a moment. Um, but we've also changed from, say, land shape to geography because land shape only deals with the shape of land. Geography is a much broader term. Um, I remember what, uh, oh, water supply, yeah. Water supply is about the same. Farm roads to access, because again, it's a broader term. Um, we've gone from trees to ecosystems. Prior to this year, um, I think maybe even last year, we um, had this as forestry. So it was the forestry layer, but we had this sort of long, long running conversation within the workplace and our alumni community to um, out on the names of these layers. Um, and uh, we finally, after a lot of discussion, um, uh, settled on ecosystems as being the most appropriate, the sort of living systems layer. Then we've got buildings instead of um, permanent buildings, we've got buildings because a lot of our buildings aren't permanent anymore, they're, they're portable. So we're looking at that. 
um, fencing instead of subdivision, soils, soils, um, and then we added on economy and energy. So in terms of the scope of the layers, um, that uh, again, sort of broadened that out from, from Yeoman's original um, factors. Um, so in climate, Yeomans was pro predominantly looking at the meteorological climate and what he called the climate of the soil, the influence of the two um, as they connected. And that really connected his top factor with his, uh, well, I won't say his bottom factor, but the eighth factor, the soil factor. The climate from his perspective was the hardest thing to change, which is why it was at the top of the scale of relative permanence. The soil was the easiest thing to change and, and from his perspective, change in terms of degrade, but also change in terms of improve. Um, we um, also looked at this, especially through the influence of holistic management um, to, to also consider what I call the climate of the mind, uh, the climate between your ears, whatever you want to call, however you want to call it. So that, um, and that's why we've got in the icon, the human head, but also we've got the sun, the sun to sort of say, all right, well, there's, cli there's a cli climate of the mind, but there's also a meteorological climate out there, um, a biospheric climate. But then there's also all of these other climates. There's the cultural climate, the regulatory climate, the climate of risk, um, the, the political climate, all of these different um, climates, including that, that we uh, suffer ourselves, um, but also enjoy, um, depending on where we're at in our, in our times of life. And that climate, those climates do actually change. Um, so we do have, as people say these days, we've got changing climates or climate change. We do have changes to the climates of um, regulation, risk, politics, ex ourselves, but it's very, very slow. Um, and so I would say, yes, we have based this whole platform on a scale of relative permanence and there is that there'll always be that inbuilt to this, but don't get too hung up on the scale of permanence thing, because as you'll, uh, as we'll realize as we go through this, um, that can actually be a bit of a limiting factor. And the way I look at it too, is that when I'm looking at the water layer, I'm also looking at the, the fencing layer. I'm also looking at the economy layer. I'm looking at the access layer. I'm looking, I'm looking at all layers whenever I'm looking at any layers. And any one factor or, or um, bit of infrastructure that we're looking to plan. So, yeah, we'd like to get the water done. That, but you know, sometimes water will be the position of water assets or water infrastructure will also be determined by buildings. The building layer might actually have a bit more of a prominence there. So, getting hung up on. Um, let's say the dogma that might otherwise be the scale, key line scale of permanence. Let's, let's move a bit beyond that. I think there's rationale in it, but I think we're all capable of being able to manage that rationale and why it's there. And when you pull that lever in terms of your decision-making, in terms of the placement of different infrastructure in particular, and when you might, um, when you might be a bit more flexible. So we like to look at it in, those, in that framework, and I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, so the land, the geography layer um, has to do with landform, so land shape, but also um, we use the key line geography and geometry uh, study because that is really good. It's really helpful to people. Um, it, they're one of the great things I think I've learned out of the key line or studying key line as much as I have as a whole framework is that the, there is a elegance that comes from um, a study of key line geography and where that goes, particularly on livestock properties, is that the landscape, once you understand it and go through a process of using key line geography, that the, the infrastructure or uh, the, the landscape tells you where to put the infrastructure. It's actually a really cool language to learn. Um, not a hard one either. Once you can see the landscape 
and I'll help you to, to do that. Um, then once you see that, then you can see how it is connected in a ways that you perhaps hadn't seen before. And that then, because so much of what we do in agro, agro ecological systems is about connection, connection with the systems that we're managing, um, whether they're livestock or, or um, plants or, or all of the above, and that we have to access them and that we have to deliver fluids to them and you know we have to fence them and we have to shelter them and we have to provide buildings to them and so for processing and we have to energize them and and so on that's all based on connections and there's a geographic there's there's, there's a geography to that connection and the key line geography does an amazing job um, at making that simpler um, which is awesome um, it's a great gift that, well, it's always been there, <clears throat> but I think it's a great gift that P.A. Yeomans gave us in sort of saying, well, here's the, to borrow Christopher, the late Christopher Alexander's phrase, uh, it's a great pattern language um, to learn and not a difficult one. So there's all of that that goes within the, the, the um, geography layer as well as, you know, looking at geography and proximity and geology and landscape capable land capability and so on. Then there's the water layer, and I'll expand on some of this in a moment when we look at the layers more closely, but uh, you know, looking at how we get rehydration of the land, um, such a critical factor. Some of you will be going, oh, I'm way too hydrated at the moment. And I could perhaps frame this using um, Yeoman's term, you know, when he was asked about what is key line, he said, well, it's about the control of water. And what we see where we have flooding and what we see when we have not enough water um, is we have a lack of control of water. And what can we do to, um, to, to mitigate those risks at either end of that spectra? When we, can, we won't ever stop having um, droughts of, the, of, of precipitation. Um, that's, that's just gonna happen um, in places. We won't ever stop having flooding, but we can reduce the, the severity of flooding and we can reduce the severity of not having enough rain fall out of the sky. So these are things that we will look at, um, which goes back to, in part to looking at your, um, at your climate and understanding what the patterns are so that you know what, as I put it, the climate is, are the rules of the game or provide the rules of the game and the geography is the board game. All right, well, how are we gonna play the game? That's where we look at all of this infrastructure development um, to help us to manage ourselves on our, on our landscapes. Um, the access layer will, again, it's not just about having um, uh, farm roads. Well, the farm roads that we have now are also um, telephony, um, you know, how, you know, Back in the day, um, in Yeoman's day, well, if you had a telephone line on your farm, well, that was a great thing. Um, a lot of people didn't. Um, now, um, it's, at, you know, have, do I have a relationship with, uh, with Elon Musk um, in terms of, and as many of you are going to be listening to us today through, uh, via the agency of that, that sort of uh, digital infrastructure, that telephony. So, you know, we've got to uh, continually to continue to adapt to our to the technological changes which are occurring over the human journey and, uh, you know, trying to and that's part of what we're trying to manage here is just manage all of this complexity that uh, that exists. Um, ecosystems, well, we're looking at agroecology in general. So when we look at that, it's about this layer is about looking at all of the the different flora, fauna, fungi, algae, bacteria, and any other biota, and how they are integrated into these dynamic agroecological landscapes that we develop. So that's all what we're looking at there. Um, the buildings layer, we're looking at how we place, um, how we design, how we retrofit, um, agricultural buildings and portable infrastructure. That's been one of the things that's happened um, particularly over the last 20 years is how much more portable agricultural infrastructure has come into the space. 
So subdivision fencing, as Yeomans put it, was something that was really there because, um, you know, just in the 1950s, you was just starting to see electric fencing. Um, and it was all portable at that stage. Um, there was a, a very, very limited amount of, um, um, of uh, infrastructure available. We'll talk about that when we do the fencing layer. But um, so going from having, again, very fixed infrastructure to having um, uh, and livestock operations in particular, having you know, highly portable infrastructure, and now we're moving, you know, thanks to people like Dean Ravel and um, and uh, also um, uh, Bruce Maynard, that there's a whole bunch of uh, different um, self-herding techniques and so on, and shepherdry is making a comeback and so on. Um, someone just asked the question about the participants. Yep, yeah, we can do that. Um, the soils layer, um, yeah, this is a fun one. Um, I'm, I think I'm up to about page 100, 480 of the soils chapter. Um, I expected when I, when we wrote the, uh, set out to write the organ, uh, the agrarian's handbook that the whole book would probably be about that length, um, but I've got one chapter that's that. It's a massive, massive subject. Um, and um, yeah, uh, it's it's taken. Well, we're up to I think we're three years into writing this one, one just one bloody chapter of a book. So um, yeah, it's a massive uh, massive topic. Um, but I think when we peel the onion, um, there's some really basic things that we can do at the same time. Um, it's 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 a topic that's full of rabbit holes. Um, but um, but at the same time, there's some, as I said, there's some basic things that we can do um, to profitably treat that that uh, lithosphere or the pedosphere um, in such a way as to regenerate it and maintain it. The economy layer, this is a new one, um, if you like, on top of Yeomans, and this is where we're looking at the whole analysis and strategy of the different. Uh, agroecological enterprises and capital flows. And um, all that goes on with running a farm business, of which there's a lot, or a business that is integrated in with, ag with an agroecological um, expression on the landscape. And then the energy layer, well, that's where we get into that burgeoning topic as well, um, where we're in a sort of a, 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 a an interesting time in history where we've we're at the at the end of the fossil era that we've fossil energy era that we've been on for about the last three hundred years, um, and now we're now we're shifting into something else, which is uh, and you can it's it's a very dynamic space and trying to navigate that as well in terms of how we uh, move forward is uh, is a massive challenge and I don't. And I don't think anyone has the answer for that one. I'm just going to take a break from the Rigorians platform for a minute, just to, because we're going to come back to that and just change up to look at the Rigorians workplace. So when we look at the workplace, one of the things um, that, you, that you'll see when you open it up, and this is where I'd love, love for you to go straight to, um, well, you'll see that you've got this W sort of symbol. Well, that's the home button, and that's where I am currently here. Um, and it will just bring up a sort of a news feed, um, but it will also show you these groups that you that have come on. Now, I've managed what are my priority groups, and you might do the same um, as you go along. So you can just uh, click on the number of groups that you want to have as your priority. So the planner members in the handbook are my pro two biggest priorities. Um, so they're there. So but if you want to look for anything like that, say you don't have the planner group up there, we'll just type into here into the search. This is a there's so much that you can find um, by just clicking on the search. 
So if you just type in planner members, it'll immediately take you to uh, the planner member group, which you are, if you're listening to this, um, or if you've, sorry, if you're listening to this, then you may not be a member of it yet because some of you are just looking at uh, joining the Regrarians uh, for the first time. Um, but for those of you who are planner members, um, you will, um, you should immediately go to this planner member orientation and access um, um, page uh, or post that we've got here. It gives you the full uh, array of information about what uh, is there. So, you know, uh, watch the video. Um, it sort of extends on what we're talking about here. We've got some rules of contact, which are just general, don't be an arsehole um, um, and be professional. Um, this is a workplace. So treat it as a workplace. Um, um, so, you know, um, certainly you can have um, disagreeable conversations, but you do it in a way that's productive um, as opposed to disruptive and de degenerative. So that's what we're looking at there, but by all means, have a look. Um, you can also change some of your notifications. That's something that I do suggest people do. So when you come in here, just go to your profile button, which will be down here in the corner. This is all on the computer, not on a, on a, um, on a device as it were, and just go to your, uh, settings. And then one of the things I advise you to do, so you don't get annoying emails all the time, or you might want to, cause they can help you is just click on email and if you don't want to get an email every time there's a post that's attached to you, just um, put required notifications. That'll turn all that noise off, okay? So that's one thing we do. Um, the other thing, uh, just going back to the planner members as well, is uh, that we've got in here. So all of the, uh, the links to the apps that we talked about earlier, and then we also suggest that you create a group for your project here. So years back, what we did was we, before um, this, because this platform has been uh, improving all the time in a whole range of different ways. Um, one of the things that we um, suggest, well, what we used to use was uh, Google Drive. So people would create a Google um, Drive folder um, and then they'd cross link it back. We're trying to limit for you how often you have to hop in and out of this one platform. So don't platform hop as it were, um, so that you can do everything or as much as you can within here. So if we're looking at it as much as anything, the two platforms that we primarily use are these ones, um, the workplace and Google Earth um, are the two primary platforms that we use. We'll talk about that a bit further later. So to make a group, and some of you have already done that, um, you'll see, I should actually put that in here as well. Um, we actually have a, um, a, a naming protocol, which I should have put there, but I've got somewhere else, but anyway. Um, so you just click on create group, and let's say you're in Australia, and you're in New South Wales, and I'll use Rebecca because I've got her on there. Um, Yab Tree West, I think it is. I don't know if Rebecca's on the call this morning. And then uh, Gorman. So that'll be, so in the case of this, this is our sort of naming protocol. Uh, country code, state, province, county code, whatever you want, name of the property or the project, and then surname or both names of you, the primary member. Um, and then you can make that open, closed or secret. Um, only do secret if you've got stuff in there that's super sensitive um, or that you just don't want to, hi there, Beck, um, that you don't want to um, have engaged with. So um, like if you've got financials in particular or just if that makes you more comfortable, then definitely do that. But most people will go with open and then they go with open because then that allows others to come in and look at your work. And that's a really big part of what we've, well, I think it's a really big plus of what we're doing here that 
we've kind of created farm plans which are like a barn raising as they do you know that it i don't see that farm planning should be a singular activity which is isolated to uh, one family group or otherwise it's it's best done as a community activity it's best done where you can put things out there and go hey what do you think about my pipeline system based on this mapping and so on and you'll be surprised how many people come in and say yeah well that's probably if you thought of this what is that too much pressure you know just stuff that you may not have contemplated or you might have listened to me talk about but need a bit of a reminder or that i might even overlook and so on so it's useful to to click on that so i'll, I'll set bex up while i'm here now you'll add people to that um so in the case of Becca, I'll just add her. So you just put your name in there. Um, seeing I'm making this group, it'll be for her. And then you create the group. Um, I generally put a chat. You won't have more than 250 members of your group. Why we have the chat too is because just remember that um, the Regrarians uh, memberships are per project, not per person. So Rebecca might uh, invite her husband or if she's got uh, any people working on the farm um, or any consultants that she works with or whomever else who are part of her decision making or triage um, with this particular property or project. Well, you can invite them in at, under your plan of membership, right? So it's so it's. It's a, it's a sort of a, a, a fountainhead for all of these other folk to come in and be of support and do that within here. So once you've created that group, which I'll now do, um, then what you can do is when that flies up, you create like a Facebook group page, right? Um, so you can update the photo. I'll let Rebecca do that at some stage. And you've got the posts, you've got the chat, right? So whoever's on this chat um, will now um, be on the chat. So that can be your communications. You can add files in here, um, different media, all the rest of it, your Google Earth files, etc. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can do. Um, but primarily you'll spend your time um, producing posts and doing chats. So, for example, um, you might you might post in here, um, like uh, I'll just put uh, my uh, farm map, all right? Now, um, I'll just go to here, and I've already got this over here. So, I've got all of you in my all those members in here. I'll just go to Rebecca's place, or is it New South Wales, and there's her KMZ file from um, from Google Earth. I'll just bang that in there, right? Now, I'll just put farm map. Now, you want me to know about that, that you've posted that. And let's say you uploaded the water layer recently, right? Um, we do the same and you say, and you just tag me. Just go Darren. Or another way you can do it is you can say, um, uh, as I'll do for... I uh, just put the ampersand, Rebecca, right? Um, here's your farm map, right? Bang. Now, if Rebecca looks at her workplace, um, what she will get as soon as that occurs is a notification, which is the next part of this. And this is where you will get um, a notification um, uh, that will pop up and that'll come up if you've got this on your phone it'll come up just as you get any other notification and away you go so that's this is the world i live in um <laughs> when during the rex is the note i i i live either in chat or notifications because you will uh, notify me of work that you've done and so on and that'll come up in my notifications and i've i'll get a long, I'm lucky today, but uh, that'll change, I'm sure, um, over the next couple of days and the next uh, the period of this rec. So, yeah, that'll all come up there. Ditto with the chat. The chat, 
um, as you can see going through here, um, we've got all these different groups. Um, so Ryan, who um, sent me some stuff earlier today, he's a example. So Ryan um, sent me a, um, a copy of his, uh, his map um, and uh, of his boundary file. So we've been able to have a conversation um and so on because uh, he he's made me a member of this group and uh, and uh, away we've gone so it's a it's a it's a really simple way of us being able to manage our liaison we're trying to do this we're all we're all busy people um and so let's use the apparatus that we have to um to maximize the our, or, or make make the best use of our time the other thing that you'll be a part of um, is one of these um, groups. So we've got a, a number of, so at the moment we've got about 300 or so people. Yeah, 300 or so people who are um, uh, eligible to do the RECs um, as, as the full program. Um, and uh, you will get, so keep an eye out for these. So what I will do, um, throughout the week is I'll send you reminders about when the next webinar is on and, and so on. So you'll get access to that um, and, uh, and so on. And if there's any other information, stuff that you should be looking to do this week and so on. So you look, look for these chats um, to do that. I'll also post, I post the same into the planner members. So this is sort of like the planner member um, uh, information page. You want to know where all of the different Rexes, uh, where all of the different um, uh, Zoom links are, they're here and so on. So we have them here. So this is sort of like your home. There's two home pages. There's the Regrarians Workplace homepage, which everyone who's a member is a member of. But then only those of you who are planner members or alumni um, get access to this page and that's, that's where you can go. All right, now, uh, what else was I going to show you? Oh, the, the Knowledge Library. So the Knowledge Library is a relatively new part of the workplace platform, and it's really awesome. And again, what this has had us replace, because we had a Knowledge Library of our own that we developed in um, Google Drive. And it's anyone who's used Google Drive will know it's fairly clunky. It's not like, it, it takes a bit of work to keep it organized, um, particularly when you're managing it as a public space, which is what we've done for a long time. And uh, that's been compromised to a degree by various people deciding that they know how to categorize things better than this particular OCD person um, you're listening to now. Um, anyway, so um, there's a lot of stuff in here that you will have access to and not. So what I, as the admin of this workplace, I have access to a whole range of other organizations um, content. So um, the 3LM course, their holistic management courses and so on are listed in here. What you will have access to and what you will see when you click on the knowledge library is the workplace orientation page. So that um, George has done an amazing job here. So if you've got any questions about how to orientate and so on, Georgie goes completely over the top on all of that, um, on what the interface looks like. He's made videos all the way through so you can get knock yourself out there. But primarily, I would just watch um, this introductory video. So there's that. Um, there's the the platform, uh, sorry, the um, the workplace Oh, what am I saying? The Rex, that's the one. Um, the Rex, uh, all, all, each of the uh, Rexes that we've run so far, the online ones, um, all of them are archived here. So you can click on here and you can go back to um, the case of this. Um, all of these old um, videos or recordings of all of the old Rexes. One of the things that I'm also doing um, is in the, well, it's a fairly big project because there's hundreds of videos now, is actually uploading these directly into the workplace itself. 
Um, and the reason for that is because um, when we, and I'll just do this in here, um, let's look at, uh, let's go to, uh, let's just go to soils, for example. Um, you will see that where I've added a video recently, let's have, I'll just go to uh, files, videos, <clears throat> make it a bit easier, faster for me, hopefully. Uh, videos. So, um, here's one. So this one here, you'll see this is a, um, a Rex Q&A session. Is that there's this little CC button on here. And this is a really big thing for us because it means that as we, uh, when we upload, um, there's an automatically automatic translation of all of our uh, materials. So YouTube doesn't do that automatically, the workplace platform does. So we actually transitioning a lot of our old content into here. It's a pretty big job, but one that is worth doing. If your language is, if it's particularly important to you and there's only five, uh, is it one, two, three, four, five languages at the moment, which are automatically generated, I can, if your language is not represented there and it would be a big help to you, then let me know because it's, it takes me about five minutes, um, not a full contact time, but about five minutes to manage each one. Um, so that's, that's what we've got. Uh, someone asked, what does REC stand for? Just out of interest. Thanks, Peter. Um, it stands for, well, REC is king in Latin um, for one, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll putting that to one side. Um, it's, uh, I'll take the ego of the course away. Um, but it's, uh, re, uh, it's Regrarians 10, R-E-X, again in Latin is 10, 10 layers, 10 weeks as it was. 10 days, but 10 layers. So it connects, it's it's a sort of a, a, a way that we um, have made an acronym for the Regrarians platform. The Regrarians platform was originally ter termed the Regen 10. That was what I originally called it before I came up with the brand Regrarians. So um, yeah, that's, that's where it all came from. <clears throat> I'm always thinking of acronyms in brands. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a really valuable thing to have. So any of the um, any of the uh, items that you see here, um, you'll you'll see in the workplace themselves hmm. um, as videos. Now, um, where was I? Oh, so the platform library is another thing that we're developing. So um, it's a slow fact, a, a slow project. Um, so there's different, as you can see, some of this is empty, a lot of this is empty, um, but we're, we're gradually migrating over, be the water layer uh, might have a bit more. <clears throat> um, we've got different Q and A's in here and so on, um, and different um, <clears throat> information that we've got uh, links to. So there's that sort of thing that's that that we've developed or that we're developing in the workplace. We still have, however, the link. Um, if we go back to the planner members, we still have in our workplace group here. We still have um, the Google Drive, Terra Genesis International. Or there, some of their people decided that they would decide to restructure our library, and that was really, really bad and they didn't take any responsibility to, for doing so or didn't take any steps to undo what they did. So we've been forced to try and do that ourselves. So what you'll see here when you click on that is all of these uh, different layers of information. So if I click on that, you'll see that um, there's a bunch of information um, all in here. So. We're doing a gradual, again, it's a gradual migration because as you can appreciate, it's a lot of work, um, you know, just, just sitting down and just dragging stuff over or uploading stuff. Right, well, that takes us back to here. Um, 
we also recommend that so all your webinars are listed uh, as in the knowledge library so um that's what i was going to show you before um in here so you've got all of you've got all the backlog of videos in here but then you've also got whoops um you've also got uh if you go to rex 10 all of the uh, links so if you click on this link it will take you to today's video and so on so uh today's zoom link and so on so you've got multiple points of access i will tell you each multiple i will tell you a, a day or two before each session and give you a link you can go here and get the link you can you know so you won't you won't have uh, much of a chance to avoid uh, not being reminded here and there all right uh back to <clears throat> probably me jumping around is not hurting you in terms of uh, orientating this space so um Another thing that we would um, ask you to do is to download a copy of the Regrarians checklist. This itself is in the um, Knowledge Library as well. It continually gets updated, um, and uh, but anyway, you'll see that there, so you can either load it up in doc format or um, open format there, uh, open source, uh, uh, was it open documents? I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, the Linux, um, sort of framework there. So anyway, that's all there for you. Um, go back again. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Savory Institute, work, we work pretty closely with them and have for uh, well over a decade now, pretty well as long as they've been about. And we also work with Holistic Management International and a range of, you know, we work with pretty well everyone that we can who's who will allow us to work with them more or less um as we're a, a linking organization i suppose as much as anything else and in and very independent so there's a whole bunch of uh, books which we think are a really good foundation especially to weeks two and three of the rex where we're focusing um, a lot on you developing your holistic context so the resources there are really great but by all means Look at the other providers who are out there um so the holistic management international and so on but we'll talk about that a bit more next week um in terms of um the google drive uh, sorry the uh, google drive we've shown that the available chapters um we will provide those of you who are planner members will provide you with a coupon code which will give you access for free so when you click on, say, the climate chapter, this will take you to, let's go past that. Um, this will take you to the Regrarians um, uh, web page and just scroll down and then do your checkout. And once you've done, you, done that, then put the coupon code in here, which we'll provide to you. And uh, then you'll get that for free. Um, so you'll then get a download link. So you can just click on any of those. So after this session is hit, done i'll put those coupon codes back because uh, like i said we have a public webinar today and um so i'm not going to give all of the give everything away um because we work way too hard on all of that uh the webinar archives i've showed you uh ron webinars are the same this is an archive that we've got for various um when we've done um open so uh, sorry uh different um uh podcasts and and chats with people so on so they're all there um, back. we've also got um, oh yeah weeks we used Google Earth other people will use other programs and that's fine um, we use Google Earth because it's free it's relatively easy it's not perfect nothing nothing is but it's relatively easy it works well We've also got, so you can click on that and that'll take you to where you can download the, the program if you haven't got it already. We've also got a Google Earth Pro template, which I'll show you briefly here. We'll talk about this when we do mapping. So this template is what you can use. So for example, I'll just grab a copy of that and I'll pop that in temporary places here. Now, 
Rebecca's farm here, which we did some mapping of a few weeks ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so there's a boundary layer and there's a contour layer. These are five metre contours and that's the boundary layer, that red layer there. So what we would do here is we would start to, because with Google Earth, if you just start making maps, it just creates all of these different uh, layers and be before you know it, it gets really messy. So we've created this template, which um, at once um, is uh, allowed, uh, well, gives you a framework to put your layers in different, or your information, your mapping layers in different, in the right spots. But it also um, helps you to ask the questions of what you have to do when you're farm planning. So I'll sh just give you a, a quick uh, under understanding of that. So if I've got this boundary layer, well, I'm going to move that because the boundary we see as being a part of the climate layer. So we'll pop that in there. Um, because the boundary is a um, is per, is pretty permanent, so it goes into there, um, and then the contours you'll see here. We've got actually, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot in the cadaster, so that goes in the cadastral layer, and then the then we've got the contours. We'll just drag and drop that into where'd that go? Uh, no, I'll have to create one there. Why? Oh, Topo Maps, there we are. So this one, I'll just pop into Topo. Now we've done that, I can get rid of this, um, delete. And now what we've got is those maps are, are put within the Regrarians platform layers. Now, the reason why we do that, and there's a lot of other information in here, there's different properties and map, map mapping resources, etc. But so it's just so that we can keep everything organized and we know where to find things. It's hot, you know, there's a lot of layers that you'll build over time, um, which, uh, which uh, need navigation. Now it also helps us to put in, it'll ask the question. So these aren't filled here. Um, so say for Rebecca, um, if we're looking at, uh, at uh, her place or her family's property, no, it's gonna be a when it wants to work, um, is there'll be pipelines that'll be there. So, you know, water infrastructure that you want to put in, water infrastructure that you, sorry, that's there already and stuff that you want to put in and so on. So there'll be all of those questions or sort of leading, leading folders for you to go through, whether it's roads or utilities, you know, different, uh, eco, different uh, planting systems and fences, and so on. So that's all that's all built there for you, um, uh, ready to go. So that's why that's useful to download. And then you just put it into your workplace, and then and then once you've done that, save to my places, and that'll put it on here. It'll put it on your hard drive. You won't lose it, right? So away that goes. So that's what we're doing there. Um, once you once you've um, got into Google Earth, um, the other thing that we would ask you to do is create a boundary file. Um, so um, as best you can. So zoom into your place. And then what you can do is just go add um, uh, polygon. And let's say that this is your place, um, just draw your place. And then once you've done that, give it a name, I generally just call it boundary. Um, and then OK. And then once you've done that, just uh, save place as or um, and once you've saved that place, save it on your hard drive and then just send that to me in a chat message or put it into your group. And then that will help us to know where you are. And it will also help us because another thing that we do for you, um, if you can't do it yourself and we generally do this for people, is we will create your, um, get your contour mapping for you. Um, that's part of um, our, our um, package. So yeah, so please um, do that um, over the coming weeks so that we can, um, so that we can help you pull your mapping together. All right, because we know generally where to look. Um, yeah, uh, this one-on-one -on -one session, we're finding people don't use that too often. 
Um, one of the reasons for that is because we do four hours at least of Q&A per week. Um, and the Q&A sessions, uh, like if I just click on Q&A, whoops. Hmm. Um, so this is an example of a Q&A session. So what we do here with this is with Lydia and uh, Eric in California. When we do a Q and A, we record it as an individual segment, and because we do that, we can um, well we can hone in on the topic of your because everyone has a different question, of course, in different places and with different contexts. And these are generally the kind of questions that if we were doing a one on one, you would do, but like I said, very few, like I'm talking, very few people take up the option of um, doing a one on one with me. I would generally say that they are those people who do take up that option are only doing it because they've got particularly sensitive topics that they want to talk about. Again, whether it's, you know, stuff that's quite personal, um, but also, um, you know, stuff that's might to do might have to do with their financial information or you know, some some commercial confidence strategies that they want to discuss and so on. But generally, most of the things that people want to discuss are discussed, and I think it's a really great way of doing it, are discussed in these um, Q&A sessions, because then you can just get, um, others can learn, and um, it just creates this great uh, library of, uh, of, of contexts um, and, uh, um, and questions around that being established. <clears throat> so I'll stop there. We've got the other groups that you can look, look at all of that. It's all linked and so on. Um, but that's, that's the, that's, I think what we've got is the basis of the workplace. So like I said, we'll just to hone on in again. Um, the main thing, planner members go there. That will tell you, um, what's going on. Um, the chat, um, use the, you, know, you won't have as many as me at this stage. You can prioritize them as I've got um, with our family and so on. Um, but these uh, these uh, financial groups and so on, um, financial members groups, and then you've got your notifications. So they're the main things and then the knowledge library. So just have a look around and you, gradually you will get more familiar with it. Um, it is made by Meta. Meta are a very popular company because they have designed their interface really well. As I often say, my auntie Maureen, who's 83, can use, who's never used this kind of thing in her life, can use it because it's intuitive. So let's hope that you can. But if you have any questions at any stage, you don't want anyone else to know what your question is, then write it to me personally. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, you'll just, just have a crack and you'll be surprised how far you can go. All right, so going back to, um, if anyone's got any questions. Oh, who owns the data we put into the system? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'd have to go and read the 700 page uh, document that perhaps explains that. As far as we're concerned, um, and this is where we've, um, uh, where are we? If I go to planner members, if we look at the workplace rules that we've got in place, uh, Michael, um, where we've got our hot, where we've got our holistic management, the way we look at this is that um, we I'll just where have we dealt with that. Um, oh, the sharing of any regrarian's workplace content out to outside of the regrarian's workplace is subject to the permission being given granted by the individual member who created or added that content. So look, whenever we're using um, these platforms, um, there are going to be rules and I'm not going to pretend to know exactly who owns what right when push comes to shove, right? But um, as far as we're concerned in the, as the operators of this, using these third party platforms, um, this is our rule, right? Which is, you know, we've got a one pager in terms of our rules of engagement. It's pretty straightforward. So 
yeah, that's that's the best I can do, and I hope that works for you. Um, if not, we'll then we'll need to talk. Um, all right, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not if you put up something, it's yours. It's your content. It's not ours. It's yours. Um, and the right thing to do is to, if you want to uh, use it, is to ask permission. I don't see that as being too big an issue. Um, and uh, am I, uh, yeah, no worries, thanks, Michael. And Peter's asked, am I inv able to invite, involve my wife and kids so they can join using this resource? Absolutely. Um, if your wife and children are, or your farm manager or your uncle who advises you or your aunt or your consultant or whomever you have, that is, you know, it's not a free for all, you know, B, and I know people wouldn't do this, but it's, um, it's you if you've got people who are part of your um, decision making triage um, then by all means um, ask them send, send their name their full name and their email address to me and um, I will add them under your account simple as that all right um, which is a pretty good deal um, I think we think all right, so let's get back to the Regrarians platform. Where did I put that? There we go. So we've looked at the workplace. Let's look at the platform a bit more deeply. Uh, I'm just going to... Okay. So as I mentioned, we have these the rules of the game. So climate and or geography and uh, sorry geography climate uh, the rules of the game board game geography so also i frame these as constitutional or foundational layers as you know so when we're developing a farm plan um to think of it at the start and that's how we've developed this course is we want you to know who you are and what you're doing and we want those who you're working with to know who they are and why they're doing what they're doing and why they're involved and how they can be involved in the whole project. Um, too often we see um, that uh, the social ecologies called families and farming enterprises and businesses um, where people come together um, don't have enough understanding about what everyone's purpose is and so that makes it really difficult because it's hard to communicate pe with people and have people thrive when you don't understand what their purpose is, what's actually driving them and so on. So that's really important to us. And I think, I hope that it will be really important to you. And if it's not completely understood yet, um, well, over the coming weeks, the necessity of that will should become more clear. I should say as well, this is all completely optional. You know, you might go, look, I'm not going to worry about all that shit. That's that's all namby pamby. I know the way I want to run. I've been successful, blah, blah, blah. Look, if that's how it rolls for you, absolutely. You, it's a, I've just come here for the mapping and how to learn to know where to put things, right? Well, if that's where you're at, just avoid the next couple of weeks and I'll see you, um, I think, on week four when we start doing the mapping, right? So it's completely up to you, all right? So we're not here to, uh, to tell you what or how to run your lives. Um, we just have found that in general, it is helpful to establish these things so that you can have a greater, um, a, a greater amount of uh, human output. So that's constitutional, quite what happens in your head and how it's all run. The, in terms of the um, geography, we're going to help you with that as well. But that, not only to just generate your maps, because most people, as I've found, don't have high levels of map literacy, particularly topographic map literacy. And we will, we, we've been there, done that with so many people over a long time. So we will keep working with you until that, that, is understood it's there there will be there are a number of tools that we that we uh, that we have um, which can help you in some in, 
if you're finding that difficult, um, there are a number of tools that we've developed which will help you understand what a map looks like and what it's telling you, particularly topographic maps, because people just, it's, it's like looking at an entirely different language for some people. So yeah, we'll help you with that. Um, now, the infrastructure and development layers. And again, this is not hard and fast, but it's pretty well how, how we look at it is that these layers are where we're building stuff, where we're deciding, you know, that question that I just posed before, you know, I wanna know where to put things. Where do I put my pipes? Where do I put my fences? Where do I put my roads? Where do I put my trees? You know, and so on it goes. So we want to um, categorize the layers in that way. Yeah, this is a this is a where you put things layer. The climate and the you might say the climate and the geography and the economy and the soils layer may tell you how capable uh, both you are financially and uh, how much time you have and so on your whole all of those contexts financial context time con availability context and then land capability will tell you well where are these things going to go so there'll be other layers like i mentioned before will inform layers will, in will inform the work that you do and that's part of what the again the sort of language, I suppose, of the Regrains platform that we're trying to impart here so you understand that better. And do so, again, in a supported environment because we don't expect that you will necessarily get this straight away. And that's why we do this over a year and that's why we give you the rest of your life to be a member so that you can uh, keep coming back to it and hopefully contribute. Um, excuse me for the sound of my gulping, might drive some of you mental. Um, probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> anyway, management layers. Well, all of the layers are management layers, but there's a greater focus, I think, on the soils layer. So I look at the soil, soil is natural infrastructure, but it's very complex and it's something that we manage. The economy is built of uh, economic infrastructure, but it's something that's very complex and that we find ourselves managing more than than, uh, than anything else. So, um, so that's why we've got those there um, in that frame. This is just to help us understand the platform a bit better. All right, we've talked about the applications. Oh, actually, I actually I didn't do this in the workplace when I was just showing you this. I overlooked it, but. The Regrarians platform um, application within the pl workplace is that we have different layers, have different groups, which I'll just, sorry, I should have mentioned that before. So when we go back to here, if you wanna know any of the layers, then you just type in. So if you want soil, the soils layer, just type it in. It doesn't, because of the, the way we've sort of shoehorned our way into this. You can certainly put these all in priority groups if you want. So you've got the one to 10, but uh, it's pretty easy to just pop soil in there and you'll go to the soils layer. Um, you'll see that all of the different headings are here. So what we suggest to people is if you're gonna post something, and these are headings which are directly linked to the sections in the Regrarians Handbook. All right, um, so let's say you wanna talk about um, vermiculture. So you might have a post about your worm, your on-farm worm um, production system. Well, I'll just go vermiculture and my worm farm, All right? And that's it. Now you'll notice that the top part of the post comes up, there's formatting in here. So I generally get a bit fancy with that. I'll put a large heading and make it bold. Right, and then just go click, and now you're into normal, and you can say, yep, I've got this, here's my worm farm, add some photos, blah, 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 then you're done, right? Um, that's, that's what a post is. Um, so always go to those first to help you guide. That helps you think about things in that way. Not everyone does it. We prefer it if people do, like you can see here. I've just done uh, some chromatography. Here's some examples of some of the chromatography um, images that people have taken and so on, a bit of a discussion and off it goes. Now, 
people start chatting about it. It does help to categorize things. It does help when you put these keywords up to, uh, for, the, for, for people to find things. Because I can just go in here and I can put agronomy, for example, or agronomic, and anything with those words will, will start to come up and away you go. So you, the search tool in this is actually pretty powerful. So you can use the layers and you can scroll, right? Or you can, um, or you can just use the search if you've got a particular topic. We've built a huge amount of information in here and luckily it's categorized because otherwise, like if you go to the Facebook group type place, well, it's not categorized and very few people um, well, I've been to very few groups. I used to run, try and run it that way when we ran a Facebook group was to try and use at least hashtags and that sort of thing. But a group is a group, right? This workplace is one space made up of a whole lot of groups all in one, which you can easily find, right? Um, so it's a much more navigable space. So it's dancing between a space where we're producing content and managing the, the placement, so like a forum. Um, it's also dancing between that and being a, um, a, a, a having a communication, so really effective communications between individuals. And then thirdly, as a training space. So it's doing all of those things um, pretty well. Uh, right. Uh, we talked about the uh, Google Earth Pro layers, um, the platform library or knowledge library. We do this. I mean, this is just me. Um, it may be work for you in the management of your farm related um, file manager because you will run a farm and you'll have a computer and you'll have files. We find that the um, platform also helps to be able to um, put things in the right places so that you can find them. Um, so we've done that. Right, so to the platform itself in its overview. So we've looked at it sort of from a high level. Let's zoom in a bit closer. And of course, over the coming weeks, we'll zoom right in even closer. So when we look at the, the climate layer, we're looking at you and your family and the community you're around, you know, sort of like starting in your own head and then going around other people's heads and those in your community and the culture that you're part of and then broader to that, to the regulations and then the risks that are associated with that and um, with, with, with the various climates, including the meteorological one. And you'll notice that on this here, the thing that we've focused on the most is holistic management and how you will try and frame your purpose and how your purpose will be framed by um, what you want out of life. Um, what you want in terms of the quality of life that you have um, and what you want in terms of the future. And so we've, um, so we've, people will express that in a wide range of ways. One of the values I suppose that we have is that we aren't beholden to just one way of doing this. We have, a, we've got, you know, we, we work with a lot of different people who are trying to have people understand these things in a wide range of ways. So no, we're not just using the Savory Institute way or the Holistic Management International way or whatever, we're using a wide range of ways to establish these uh, things which work for you. Um, part of bottom, right hand, uh, bottom left hand corner there is part of our checklist. And the checklist has um, points of entry there where you can start to populate um, stuff about not only your your, um, your holistic context development, but also um, all of those things about your actual climate, your, your bio, biospheric meteorological climate as well. So question of, you know, can we and can and will we adapt? Um, Eric Ashby wrote a book in 1978 called uh, Reconciling Man with the Environment, which is a brilliant piece, um, Baron Ashby, and it really helps us this this uh, quote from here on the on the dust cover um, I think is um, really really useful for us to sort of frame where we're going um, and the seminal problem remains unsolved can man or can people adapt themselves to anticipate 
environmental constraints? Or will he, like other animal societies, adapt themselves himself only in response to the constraints after they have begun to hurt? In one facet of this problem, I see a reason for cautious optimism. And that's, I agree. I mean, I think this is where we're, this is, this is uh, where we're at. Um, we've got all of these changes going around us. It seems like, and I don't know whether this is just because we're so bombarded with media, um, but it seems like there is a lot going on. Probably always has been, but we've made a pretty complex world. And so that helps us. Uh, I think as soon as we own up to that um, and understand that as best we can, well, then to try and understand the effect of that context on our own and how we're going to proceed um, is a is a is a really good starting point. But each of you will have a different starting point, a different space from which you feel you will be adapting or will be adapting to. We've got a few points here where we're looking at each of these different layers about, you know, what it's about and what are the, some of the questions that you might be, or maybe some of the pointers that you might be looking at. Um, you know, identifying your social, financial and ecological weak links. You know, just reframing the way you do things so that you are a bit more on, on game uh, by being, and that means being str more strategic, being incremental, being pragmatic and being fiscally disciplined. If you are not any or all of those things right now, it's probably not a bad thing to be because the lessons that we've found is that those who are more of those things tend to... Um, tend to get where they want to go more effectively. But that also goes to us and our climate um, as well, because we have looked at literally thousands now of people's holistic contexts being developed. And it's a fascinating thing. And I mentioned this in a podcast the other day, that we probably should um, get someone to look over those and sort of pull it all out. But I'm going to tell you right now, what stands out to me is that most people want the same things. The general things, and I'll see this again with the next um, lot of holistic contexts that are developed. Most people want to see um, their, themselves and their families be happy and healthy and financially secure. They're, you know, that's, that's, I could put that stamp on just about everyone's holistic context. Number one. They want to have more time with their family. Uh, they want to get better work-life balance. Um, and they want to increase biodiversity and productivity. Those are the, the, those are the key things that we see time and time and time again. And it doesn't matter whether you are in India, Nepal, Australia, Mexico, United States, wherever you are, it pretty well everyone says the same thing. And so we need to understand that, that most people are on a human journey, living uh, a life in this complex world. Some of us have got more complexity around us than others. We need to know that and own it. We also need to know that we're on a journey um, of transition. Um, and what's that gonna look like? And I've tried, I've, you know, tried for years to sort of frame that and I will continue to try to, but. We look at it as being, all right, well, you're going to start with some sort of introduction to these concepts. And um, that's where a lot of you are going to be right now with all of this, um, is uh, this, this space. You're looking to, to the Rugrarians and this course to help you with that. So that's that. And then you've got this why. Well, why am I doing this? And that's what I've said. Let's understand that. Let's self-determine what why you do well, why we, why do we do what we do right and oh and that might have you land on well i'm actually not doing what i want to do which goes back to i matching personalities to job descriptions have you ever assessed your personality how well do you know yourself how well do others around you know you and these are some of the questions depending on where you're at and where you are at in your family, community, or enterprise compact, um, just how effective you're communicating those things. Because 
just like we're trying to see the best potential in our landscapes, we're also trying to see the best expre- best expression of you um, in the journey that you have, the time that you have. So what resources do I have right now? Um, mapping, money, skills, etc. So that's where we're looking at our current resource base, you might say. Um, and what are the returns that we expect? Um, and what are those? Re- what what does return on investment mean to you? Does it mean financial return? Does it mean cultural return, or just you feeling good? Right. Everyone here listening will have a different idea of what a return will be, and that's something you need to spell out. I mean, we have I won't say we have a lot of people. We have a few people who go through these programs and say, "Look, I." I'm not doing this to make money. Um, I'm doing this because I really like my environment and I want to see more birds, right? That's my, I love birds. I want to see more bird, wild birds on here or, and so on. Or I want to increase the species that are native to this region. That might be what I'm doing. You know, I've made my money elsewhere. I'm okay. I've done that, right? So, and then for others, it'll be very different. It'll be, look, I really need to make more money. Um, you know, I'm in this particular spot. I've got tax bills to pay. I've got kids to put through school. I've just got lots of bills, um, all the rest of it. How am I going to do that better? And I'm, I do this as a land manager. So how is my land base going to do that? But I also want to see the place improve at the same time. You know, there'll be those sorts of questions that people ask there and what resources they have are available to help that. So where do we focus our attention? Where will we place elements in the landscape? Like I talk, you know, that that question of where do things go, right? Um, But then where are our markets as well? And then when when will we begin, right? Um, Is this the beginning point or have you already started your beginning, (laughs) right? Um, Are we, um, what are the next steps? The big when part, like the where things go, that's easy because we can spend all day, you know, drawing up flowery plans about, you know, all these beautiful things that we're going to do. But when are we going to do them? Because that goes back to what uh, um, and the how. How are we going to fund all of this? Um, What resources do we have? Um, So the who, who will do this? Now, all of these things are all interacted. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's no, there's no um, single question on here, particularly from two to, to seven, which doesn't have you ask one of the others. Um, and then how do you feel about all of this? And how will, how will this all be supported into the future? Because these systems are long-term systems. You are a perennial species. You are dealing particularly generally as you know one of the definitions of a regenerative agri- agroecology is that it's made up of perennial organisms and you are one of them so and then you have kids right you or you have other people who are going to follow you that's a regeneration there's succession in regeneration so how does that all work so part of part of how we engage with all of this is to is to consider where we're at right now and I'll look at, I'll ask you to, to also look at understanding the way that you will use this Rex program as well, right? You're going to get access to, as a deeply involved participant, for 12 months that you pay, you will have a direct 28 week relationship with myself, um, where uh, outside of that, I'm doing my sabbaticals, right? So I'm writing books. If I answer, if you ask a question, I'll probably will answer it, but I might say, hey, let's wait until the Rex is on. But my purpose during these 14 week programs is to answer your questions, right? And I'm obliged to do so. Um, So, um, how are you best going to use the Rex? A lot of people, when they first come into this, depending on where they're at, let's say you've like here, just bought a place, still living, they work in town um, and so on. Does this 
I, I don't, I can't pigeonhole people, but if that kind of bits of this largely resonate with you, you've bought a place, it's a blank canvas. Um, you're still working in town. You still got a young family. Um, you, you haven't had much experience and so on. How are you going to use the Rex? Um, well, for a lot of you, you're probably, and this is how a lot of people work it, they use the first 14 week program to just watch and listen and ask questions and just try and find their way and get their mapping together and so on. And so that's where we look at, you know, in here, if we look at each one of these um, graphs as being an indicator of what you're paying attention to in Rex number one, well, for, for Sarah and her partner, they might focus just on getting their holistic context sorted and getting their map sorted. And there's a few other elements because, you know, we want to move there in a few years. So it's not all like you have to do it yesterday, but you have to get things in place. There's no roads. It's hard. You know, access is hard. Da, da, da. I'll just give some leading points here. So we might want to focus um, a bit on getting the soils right because we can do that. Um, we can get that beat running uh, when we go out to the property because it might be a sort of a weekend sort of thing you go out there and you do what you can on the weekends um, you might just do a bit of work here and there to get that up you might get some contractors involved ultimately to focus on um, building the, building some access um, getting some fencing done so you can get your soils going and so on so there'll be those things that you will focus on and that's part of um, the priority checks that we ask people to do. So go through and especially on the front end where you're looking at, um, at your climate, at the context in the development of that, trying to forecast what it actually is that you are going to want to do um, in, in the period. Like, because you won't do all of this at once. I mean, I work with billionaires and I have worked with a number of them over the journey. And they've, you know, you might say they've got all the, resor the financial resources in the world. They, they, they have people and so on. They don't get it all done in one go, right? It takes time. Um, so, um, so you, you know, you have to bite off what you can chew. All of that stuff. So we will try and work with you to say, hey, um, look, I reckon you probably you're putting a bit on your plate that you won't be able to uh, actually get through. Um, so. Um, so let's just pull back and let's just try and focus on the things that matter and that really are, again, strategic, incremental, um, pragmatic. Let's try and be those things here. Let's use the resources. So it might come to, whoops. So in terms of the, so they're the priorities. Um, and then we've got Rex number two, right? So you've had this period in between. Um, of, uh, you know, eight, 10 weeks or whatever in between Rexes. And at this period, you've, um, you've been able to think of, you know, go and do some of the work perhaps, or just get it in, get it in train. Now you come to the second Rex and you go, okay, well, I've done my holistic context. I've got my mapping um, and so on. I still might need to do the soils and so on. Uh, I've done my access planning. Maybe I need to pay attention to them because I'm getting them built and so on. So you see, what I'm, like there's no one, if I did one of these for each of you, they would all be very different. There would be some similarities according to the two um, imaginary um, scenarios that I've got here. Um, but um, there'll be that, yeah, there'll be different sets of priorities for each of you. So here's another one, M and Rod. Or 5152, they've got older kids, three of them. Um, they've been on the place, so it could be 20 years, it could be 100, it doesn't really matter. Um, they want to transition from what they're doing now as, as land managers to what they want to do, and they want to do it with their kids, right? Well, some of you may not have children, some of you might be looking to flip, you know, so there'll be all of the uh, you know, change the property ownership, you might be looking at, gee, I want to fix this property up um, and then in five years sell it, right? So that's another context. That's going to then influence how you develop and run the place. Um, you don't have any maps, running out of water, the roads are terrible, pastures, you know, it's, this is a place that needs some work. Um, the houses and the sheds are good, which is great, um, um, and losing money. Right, 
So where do we start? Well, is it imp as important? When I read that, I go, gee, um, well, what we probably need to do here is get the place running properly, right? So what we find is generally when we've got scenarios like that is a strong focus on financial planning is important. Um, and we might, yeah, we'll look at our context and all of that. Yeah, don't, don't not look at that. Um, but there might be a bit of a suck it up at the moment um, a bit and we just need to get to work on getting the ship corrected, getting in the right direction. And what are the ways, it's a livestock property, so what are the ways that we're going to do that? Well, we're going to look at the way we fence it. And fencing for us is not about going and building fences everywhere. It just might be the way that you run your animals, right? The kind of operating system that you have there. We might need to improve the water infrastructure somehow, water act, the, the water quality there. So we're going to focus on that and focus on getting the economic ship turned around. Because if that doesn't get, if these things, if these corrective actions aren't put in place from the get go, um, we might we not might not find ourselves um, in a very good position. You're just pushing the can down the road, and that's again where we're at here. I'm very capable of having very honest conversations with you. Um, so, because I've been through so many scenarios um, that I can just pull in a moment um, others who've been not in exactly the same position, but probably very, very similar. And yeah, I suppose the benefit of that from our engagement is that I will know someone who's been through something similar and then I can draw upon that. Um, that's part of the role of experienced consultants, I suppose. Um, it, yeah, and that's, and, but, and, and, and we will also, we also know a ton of people who uh, may be better equipped or probably will be better equipped to help you if you need other help as well. So, and people who've been through this who are just like you, who we can connect you to and say, hey, um, maybe it'd be good if you uh, you two uh, uh, caught up and had a bit of a chat, right? So the peer-to-peer -peer stuff as well. So let's say we've done that, right? Now, in between, we're going to focus on those works, right? In between the Rexes, let's say. This may not be in between the Rexes. This might be, you're going to do this. This is going to take you a couple of years, two or three years, because stuff like this does. Um, for you to pull yourself back, you know, maybe you've got a bit of tax debt, maybe you've got a bit of, you know, your, your debt to equity ratios down are uh, too high. It's all of those things you go, okay, I need to suck it up a bit here and just get sorted. And it might take two or three or five years to get that done. It is what it is. So you're in between Rexes, you might come back and watch the next one <laughs> a few years later. And, um, and go, gee, all right, well, now I'm ready to uh, put those trees in. Because, <laughs> yeah, I really want, and that's, that's where, you know, in your holistic context, you get all flowery about all the things you really would like to do. Oh, I'd like to get lots of shelter belts in. I'd like to get a block of forestry. And I'd like to do this. And I'd like to do that. And then you look at the hard and fast economic performance that you've got and you go, mm, no, I can't do that. I've actually just got to pull my head in here and get this place going right, right? So... There'll be, there'll be ways that we play that, right? Then we come back in planning, off we go. So the geography layer, the rest of these aren't as long as the climate. So let's just motor on. <clears throat> so the geography layer, as I mentioned, this is where we're looking at, at, at the landscape's capability, at its shape um, and what it can do what soil depths are, uh, what its function is. So a lot of that, um, lots of different resources to help us with that. And monitoring. So we're using a lot of different devices to help us with that. That's part of what we'll, we'll learn when we do uh, the two, two or three weeks, I think, I can't remember now, um, of, um, of those, of focus on that layer. Um, if you're in bushfire areas, which, um, increasing number of places around the world are, um, thanks to a changing climates and also changes in land management, which are causing some of this um, for landscapes to become more pyrophytic. Um, so understanding that, 
and so on, and how you your geography affects your marketing. Uh, just bear with me for two seconds. <clears throat> Okay, I'll just get to the questions that I've got at the end. I've got one from Richard Morris and uh, and uh, Rebecca. So I'll come back to those um, when we get to the. The problem with the Zoom is that when you do the um, when you do a full page on here, you can't actually see the um, or you can't interact with the Q and A as well as you might otherwise. So anyway, uh, the water layer. Um, this is where we're looking at all things water, the way you, generally the water infrastructure, well, how do we interact with the raindrop is where we start, but then what happens beyond then? How do we conserve and distribute those collected raindrops, whether they're, they've infiltrated down into groundwater or whether they're in a dam or a tank or however. And so we're looking at storages, we're looking at harvesting, we're looking at reticulation and then treatment and fire protection. Um, and using gravity as much as possible. So access, we're looking at how do we use access and access and the water layer, you know, there's a lot of interest, if you were to, I haven't done this, but in the, in the sort of interconnectedness of layers, we've put, you know, roads are point sources of erosion. So they're very much connected with the water layer. And, you know, we've integrated that a lot with building catchment drainage, uh, uh, gradient catchment roads, which harvest water and fill dams and so on, um, and all sorts of things. So it also extends to access to markets and that sort of consideration, um, but also utilities, like I said, even now the little uh, um, photo there of the, uh, the um, Skylink RV portable satellite um, internet thing that's just come out, right? Which a few people have already, uh, a few of our members have already trialed and are really happy with, again, changing the uh, access to telephony. Ecosystems. Well, how are they running? And how are they placed? How are they integrated? You know, we may just have a grassland, we might just have an empty open landscape. Is that what we want? Uh, do we want to change things up within the grassland? Do we actually want to get it so it's a bit more introduce some woody plants in there like like trees for shelter and so on? You know, how does that all frame up? And then looking in a bit deeper, how are we integrating and, and providing the, the management conditions for all of the other species that aren't just plants and animals, um, the fungi, the bacteria, the algae, all of the rest of the biota that we're, in, that we're um, working with in dynamic agroecologies. So don't just think trees and grasslands, think about all or, or animals. Um, also consider what sort of person you are. Some people are tree people, some people are grass people, some people are Angus cattle people, some people are Dorper sheep people, and on it goes. You know, some people are olive people. Some people are all of the above, right? They're the rarest kind. So, um, and then what sort of options do you have um, for, for the range of forages, um, where you're putting things, the kind of preparations that you have and so on? What um, kind of, um, what sort of buildings do you have right now? Um, and this layer, you know, like I said earlier, the the portable building um, explosion of innovation has been really amazing, um, just as has been the tiny house place space. You know that 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 uh, means by which people can try and overcome um, ac uh, access to land issues. A lot of people are living in, I mean, RVs, go and look at RV world these days um, and uh, go and buy a, 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 see what van life people are doing. You know, there's so many different things that people are doing in this time because of various affordability. Um, you know, people are very critical of capitalism. And one of the things about capitalism is that things increase in, uh, well, there's a ratio between the affordability of things and, uh, and the value of things, um, right? So more or less the same, and um, that's that changes over time. So land access 
housing access and so on, infrastructure access has to change accordingly. We're becoming a lot more fluid as a result. We're getting, uh, for a lot of people who don't own land, don't own infrastructure, etc., they're having to think in wild and wonderful ways. Regulator, regular, from a regulatory perspective, well, as always, regulation is way, way, way behind innovation, and uh, we're seeing that all of the time. So, but going from that is, you know, are your buildings a reflection of your climate or somewhere else? Because that's often the case it isn't, because a lot of us are, most of us listening here are influenced by colonialism. And one of the artifacts of colonialism is that those of, that we take the architecture from somewhere else and impart it on, on where, we, where we go, or where we are. So a lot of energy and efficiency out there because of the transfer of, of ar architecture from one climate to another. Um, the other thing that we like to look at here is the flow of processes. You know, if you're going to, a lot of people don't consider, and even architects and landscape architects, design professionals, engineers, don't consider workflow and how critical that is. And I really enjoy um, my role in trying to do that and trying to help you in doing that. So when you, especially when you're building new things or you're looking to upgrade, how do we actually, have you actually mapped out each part of the process? Um, you know, people, people, people are generally who work in this space are uh, kinesthetic learners, so they're very good at you know, hands and uh, working with their hands and doing. You know, um, but then they're also very high visual learners, and so because of that, we need to use language that helps with that. So, getting flow charts and all of those sorts of things, are, and creating maps of spaces and places and ways are, are really helpful for that. The fencing layer is incredibly dynamic. And if we add to that the concept of self-herding and shepherdry and all of those sorts of, well, older and more nascent techniques um, and strategies, then that um, defences our landscape even further. And of course, we're going to be, we'll have to continue to have the conversation around virtual fencing and, and how that is used. But then there's also, for some of you aren't livestock managers, you're trying to keep things out as opposed to trying to keep things in, in and moving. So there's all of that as well, which is a part of this layer. Um, and how do we fence it? Um, you know, that we fence knowing it's this era, not 1000 BC, which is a lot of people are still fencing in that way. Soil's big, big layer um, and we frame it in terms that it's going to be planned grazing and cultivation or cropping. Um, that soil understandings around soils are not just about the agronomy, like the you know how much NPK have we got, or nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other uh, elements which help to grow things, but also about it's it's also a medium out of which we build things, and that our buildings sit on, right? So there's all of that sort of side of its capability. We build dams out of it, we build roads out of it, we build channels out of it. You know, so there's that geotechnical understanding about its performance as well. And then what sort of treatments are we gonna put it through? Um, that will then lead to, you know, how, how are we gonna, so when I look at it in a treatment, what sort of treatment are we gonna have so that we treat the patient? And then how are we gonna manage it as we go along? because it is very much that relationship and it's very dynamic and it can be dynamically bad and can be dynamically good. Um, that's part of it. Um, so we're, we're looking at that all the time, trying to, um, trying to understand um, that our soils are not just used for growing, but they're also used for building and situating and uh, that, that, um, we need to understand which are the most cost-effective options for us, given the capabilities that a landscape will have and the soils will have. And then there's the economy layer. And this is where we're looking at the business. Um, a lot of you are going to be creating or have already created quite dynamic, um, directly marketed, or you're looking to dip your toe in that sort of thing to change, the, change up the, the terms of trade that you've got. A lot of you don't have 10,000 acres. Um, you don't have scale of production, which makes it uh, 
where you can fit in with um, the commodity style um, uh, trading environment. You might have to, you might only have 100 acres and you want to make a living off it. So, or 50 or five or one. Um, so, you know, you have to look at the economy of scope um, as much as the economy of scale and how can we, how can we work in that? How do we collaborate with others? You know, how do we perform all of these functions, which is going to give us the, the income that we need? Um, or at least uh, how, how, can, how can the place function in, in that way? So understanding, therefore, the difference between a growth model and a non-growth model, um, getting all of your corporate structures um, sorted out, um, only supporting enterprises that you work with that, that have the health of, its, of the planet and its people and all species is your priority. You might say all of that in a holistic context, but then you go out and buy rubbish and you buy... Um, you know, bad detergents in your household and all those sorts of things, you know, which, uh, which undermine um, what, your, what, what your, the values that you speak of are. And so on it goes. Um, understand that you're not a corporation. You know, a lot of the books that we read out there about, um, about our own business management and so on pretend, have us pretend that we're a corporation and we can run places like that when there's only two of us or one of us or just a family. So, you know, we've got to understand what our limitations are there and what are the opportunities that come. And then there's energy, that layer, which is so also so dynamic as we go through energy supply and or energy generation supply, uh, storage transitions, as well as us trying to understand what is good human nutrition. Well, what is your good nutrition? Um, and which is a, which is a fun way to tie that all off. Um, and what all of that means. So thank you to everyone who's um, contributed some, most of these images are from those who've uh, been part of the Regrarians Workplace or Rex far on, on farm farm planning programs, um, but there's a few others that we've uh, borrowed some images from as well, um, who are our li who've either been clients who are, or are working with um, some of our, our, our uh, members or clients. Now we have a couple of questions there. Um, I see some someone put an ad job ad ad up there. Um, talk about those boundaries. Yeah. So um, yeah, we've got a lot of pages. I don't expect that within the scope of this two-hour session that I'd be able to explain everything. So um, we do have. If you go jobs, um, there is a jobs page. Um, we work pretty closely with Lockie. Uh, Lockie Ritchie, who's got the um, the regenerative, uh, where is it? Uh, is it, Regen Farming News. So that's another space that we recommend people use. It's a really good, Lockie's a Rex uh, Regrarians member with his wife. So um, yeah, have a look at that as well. But by all means, if you want to put something in here, people do that. Um, go for it. Um, we're pretty open. We're not, you know, we're not one of those places which say, oh, you shouldn't come in here once every month and just post something about your ad. I don't really care. I'm not that, we're not that precious, um, really. Um, yeah. Um, and thank you, Richard. I jumped into this webinar for, this is Richard Morris. I'm looking at the web page and see this is only available for planner members. Does this refer to subsequent weeks of the course? Um, yeah. So the way I'll just go there, Richard, um, for you. So if you go to best place is just go to Regrarians and we've got the wor world's most plain website, which we're very proud about. Um, it's very easily navigated, no flowery photos everywhere, blah, blah, blah. Just uh, gets cut to the chase. So go, get onto the Rex. So you just go there or to the membership here. But if you just go to the Rex, um, you'll see it says buy now. Right. The way it works is it's only available to the planner members. So you've got that cost, which is spread out, or you can pay it at once if you want. Um, and there's the listing of the package. So you get two Rexes within per, per membership period. Um, it's per project, not per person. You get the book um, as it comes out, um, all of the old stuff. Um, we do mapping for you. You get access to the QGIS stuff that Georgie's done. Um, and so on, and a lifetime membership after you've done your 12 months 
so and more. So that's what it is. So yeah, you can only <clears throat> you only get access to the Rex program if you are a Regrarians Planner member. That's it. I hope that explains that. If not, just let me know. Um, and um, yeah, no worries. All good. Anyone else got any other questions um, out there? Um, you can ask me in voice as well. Just put your hand up. I can see there's a few people there, but if you do have a hand up, then absolutely use your voice as long as your microphone's working. I'll just see. I had this on Facebook as well. I don't know if anyone's actually watching there. Um, oh, thanks to David and a few others. So my friend to, and partner in France and and my dear sister-in-law, Annie. So only a few people watching there, but that's cool. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we are live. Uh, yep, this is, um, this is all recorded. We record every session and uh, what we do um, is uh, we, um, um, it takes about an hour for us to download the recording and then process it and then it'll be posted um so you'll go um uh, you'll go into the knowledge library oops it's just there and you'll go into here and you'll go to rex 10 and you'll see that this will be swapped out for a video okay but what i will also do is i will publish this um in, uh, if we go to Rex, uh, I should put this in there, go to Rex webinars, go to webinars. Hmm. Hang on. Rex webinars, oh yeah. So we're just building this up. <clears throat> so we're gradually building this uh, where we've got all of our webinars in here but uh, at the very least you'll get you'll see it um, being put in the uh, in the planner members page and um, and ultimately in here so as we get more and more in here so this is we're, yeah we've got got quite a few in here but we're gradually getting them all in here and then they're all translated as well or well, they've all got the um, the uh, the uh, captions yep. okay. No worries. Oh, Scott, how do I join? Um, yeah, just uh, uh, for upgrading your membership. Yeah, just um, just uh, maybe just send me a message in the chat here, Scott, if you want to change from your current membership to what you want to do. So just send me a message here. And um, yeah, just let me uh, I'll It'll come through as a notification when you join up as a planner member. And uh, I'll just cancel the other membership that you've got. That's very, yeah, takes two seconds to do. Um, okay, so for those of you who um, are listening in, um, if you do want to join us, here's my, I'm not a very comfortable sales pitcher, so bear with me on this one. But um, uh, if you do want to join, if this sounds like it's reasonable, um, um, even now, or when we do our next one, I think we'll do our next one probably in June. June next year, um, then come to the Regrarians website. It won't change. We don't change fast. So just go here and click on there and then become a member. And then you can sign up. If you want to sign up a bit earlier than that, um, one of the things that people do is they might sign up as a discovery member. Um, so just go to memberships and just sign up as a discovery member and, uh, for 10 bucks a month and then you get access to the workplace at least you can get familiar and just you know still be a participant and then when you're ready to do the rex well then you're ready to go um, and you've already got a bit of a head start so there's those sorts of ways that you can do it too or engage with us um, and get into our space um, right so there's that for those of you who are who are already with us um, and signed up and on this course what we'd love for you to do is just go to the planner members and i'll put i'll send you a note about this anyway um but go to the you'll get it you'll get a, a message in the um in the uh, chat here um look out for here and you'll get a message in here um 
to uh, go and use the checklist. So the checklist, let's just click on that. That'll come up like this and you can just download that and start filling it out. And you'll don't expect you to answer all your priority in here, but it's got all the questions about your holistic context. We've made this as easy as possible, all the leading questions about everything. And there's hyperlinks so you can um, go and um, find out what these different things mean. And there's one for every different layer, right? Just have a read through it. We certainly don't expect that you'll answer all of this in the first week or two or even 10, right? So um, it's there as a guide to help, just to help you to ask some of the questions that you would ask of yourself. This is actually based off a consultancy checklist that I used to have when I would sit at your table on your farm and just go through a checklist and try and, and I'd spend, we'd spend a couple of hours going through that or I'd send it to you prior to coming so that I had a bit of a, and then you send it back so that when I landed, we'd had a good, con, I'd have a good understanding of what you know you've got and, you know, and all the rest of it. So that's where that's born. Hmm. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Um, your Rex program is phenomenal value. You have nothing to feel uncomfortable about in marketing to us. Yeah, no, no worries, mate. Um, it's just that I'm not, uh, I'm not my wife. Uh, Joel Salatin says uh, she'll sell anything to anyone. Um, so I get that. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to take a quick screenshot there. Okay. Any other questions at all? Save the desktop. There you go. I've saved that for a person who asked. Okay. Uh, confirming we can join as a planner now and do the current course. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because this is just an introduction. We don't really start the course proper until next week. And even then we have people who start in week two and three, um, sorry, three and four. It's okay because you can pick up pretty early because the main thing that we will be doing in the first, uh, well, from next week, we'll be starting to um, generate the, the um, information on in on the holistic context. So let's say that you joined in two weeks or three weeks time. The thing that I would guide you to do straight away would be to um, go straight to the the um, the archives and um, or even today. Let's say you joined today and you thought you hadn't caught up. You could go and watch um, some of. You could watch another version of this, but you could go and look at holistic context for farm planning. So a version of um, a presentation I did on a, on a Rex before. So you can go and do that. And there's lots of ways that you can catch up pretty quickly um, because we have built so much content over time. You can knock yourself out. Um, I don't know that we'll um, knock uh, Netflix off its perch in terms of, <laughs> in terms of uh, <laughs> your viewing choices, but um, in terms of your pro development, um, we'll definitely give it a crack. Okay, so thank Brooke for that. Um, any other questions going back to here? No, nothing there. All right, a question there. No worries. Okay, I'm just getting through and see if there's any. No worries. Thanks, Tristan. We look forward to you doing it. So, yeah, have a look at your um, just to just to finish things up there. Um, yeah, have a look at the checklist. So go and find that um, and. Um, and look out for that in the chat, which I'll send in a moment once I've done here. And the other thing that we'll do will be um, have a look at doing your mapping um, of your boundary. So getting that, um, because as soon as you do that, then that will help, um, I'll get on my way. Because usually the, from my perspective, in terms of my own workload, the first week or two or three, really, it's not until we get to the actual mapping week that, um, 
which is I think week four. Is it? I don't remember my own program here. Um, once I get to hmm. yeah, week four, when we start doing the farm map development, that uh, people come in to me then and say, oh, can you do my map? But if you, <clears throat> generally what happens in these first three weeks, um, for those of you who are a bit more onto it, is take that time to, to send me a boundary. You'll start populating your holistic context and stuff and start sharing that. So you're almost like a week behind anyway, because you'll look at this, it's gonna take you a little time to pull that together. So you might not send that context to me until two weeks later, but that's all good. You can send it to me anytime. Um, but just see if you can keep up with the webinars at least. Um, and if you've got any questions, you've got the two um, uh, the Q two Q and A's during the week. So one of them, well, one Q and A is set up particularly for people in Africa and Eurasia and the Americas, because um, I know some of you listening right now it'll be very early in the morning, um, very very early or very late at night. Um, and then for others, um, it'll be okay. If you're in Australia, New Zealand, uh, not too bad. If you're in the West Coast of Australia, it's just starting It's just starting to get sleep out of your eyes too. So we've got another Q&A, which is at a different time of the day. It's at five o'clock um, our time, which means that it's early morning, uh, like about seven in Eastern Europe, um, and then a bit better in the Americas and, and Africa and so on. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'll, um, yeah, just Scott, uh, if you want to do that, just go into the, if you want to upgrade your membership, just go straight to um, the Rex course page. So go to the Rigorians uh, website and just click on get onto the Rex and then you'll click buy now and then just fill that out. I'll get notified as soon as you do that. Um, and as soon as you do that, then I'll just, um, I'll just uh, close your other membership down. It's all done. It's really easy from my end. All right. Thank you. Thanks to everyone for joining us. Oh, uh, can we upload LiDAR data to... Yeah, you can. Um, if you... One of the things that um, we can do for you, Mark, is... Um, depending on where you are, um, we can certainly process LiDAR data. What we prefer to price it, process, however, is digital elevation model data, which has been already processed from LiDAR data. So um, we can have a conversation with that once you um, are inside of the workplace. So I can see um, what, uh, what you've got um, or where you are, because we're very familiar with mapping systems all over the world, as you might appreciate. And um, as we do this stuff all the time, I know what we prefer. And it's certainly a lot faster for us um, to process digital elevation models that have come, that have been processed from LiDAR data than straight LiDAR point clouds. So yeah, that makes LAS files as they come. All right, so we'll, we'll look at that when you send that through, um, depending on where you are. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks so much for so many of you joining us today. That's awesome. And look forward to, if you haven't joined us, well, you might not join us on this one, but come, come catch up with us another time. Um, or otherwise, um, yeah, for those of you who already joined up, well, let's get on with it. All right. Thanks, everyone. And uh, have a really, really wonderful day.